And with me now is Leon Panetta, former CIA director and secretary of defense in the Obama administration and former White House chief of staff to President Clinton. So let's begin with Vladimir Putin. His troops have been in position for weeks. He continues to meet with world leaders and speak with the press. That's a good thing. What do you think he's weighing right now? He says he's withdrawing. The State Department says they don't see signs of withdrawal. In fact, they see signs, and so does Stoltenberg at, at NATO, that his troops are moving closer in some parts. Andrea, I, I think uh, this is still a very dangerous moment, uh, and uh, the possibility of, uh, of something happening uh, like, a, like an invasion is still very real. Uh, problem is that uh, this may very well be round one in what will be a long, a long military and diplomatic standoff between the United States and Russia that in many ways could determine the future of our relationship uh, and uh, the future of the, of the Ukraine. Uh, the fact is we have disrupted Putin at this point. He usually likes to operate in the dark. Uh, we forced him to operate in the open. Uh, we're, we've made clear that he's going to pay a price. Uh, I think that has disrupted his strategy at this point. Uh, I think the president has made that clear yesterday that uh, we are unified with our allies. We're going to continue to stand strong and make clear that he's going to pay a price. But right now, it's very difficult to see how this plays out, uh, because I think we're still dealing with uh, 150,000 Russians on the Ukrainian border, and we're still dealing with the possibility that they have the power to invade uh, and probably overwhelm the, uh, the Ukraine if they wanted to. And I just want to update everyone and uh, bring you in on this as your uh, experience, of course, as former defense secretary, because the military, the Pentagon, has just announced that three U.S. Navy P-8 Poseidon surveillance planes had close encounters with Russian aircraft, they say, over the Mediterranean this past weekend. And there has been a complaint that this was what they are calling unprofessional intercepts by Russian aircraft that the U.S. flight crews were in international waters, airspace, rather, over the Mediterranean Sea at the time of these intercepts, um, and that we've made our concern known to Russian officials, which just makes your point that we don't know what is going to happen. They have as many as 150,000 troops massed on the borders. They're surrounding Ukraine on three sides. They've got warships doing exercises at sea, effectively a naval blockade, and elsewhere, Beyond this immediate region, there can be incidents. We're at a, a very tense stage around the world. Well, you know, look, we're, we're looking at probably what is the largest concentration of military forces uh, in one area since, uh, since World War II. Uh, 150,000 Russians, uh, a number of uh, their, their warships, uh, their combat planes have been stationed on the border. Uh, we have uh, reinforced our position in NATO. Uh, we've uh, supplied weapons and assistance uh, to the Ukraine. Uh, this is a heavy concentration of military power. And what happens in that situation uh, it could be a dangerous thing. It could be one misjudgment, uh, one mistake, uh, one plane flying too close to another, uh, one bad decision. Uh, and uh, and war could break out. So this is, uh, I think, uh, still a very dangerous moment for not just the Ukraine, but for the world. How do you view the matchup between the reconstituted Ukraine military uh, since 2014, of course, when Russia grabbed Crimea, and the insurgency that one expects the, we see the emotions today on Unity Day, this holiday that Zelensky declared. How do they, how do they match up against what Russia has if Russia chooses to invade? Well, I'm, I'm glad that we've uh, provided uh, defensive weapons. I'm glad we've provided training. I'm glad we're, we're continuing to provide arms to the Ukrainians. Uh, and I'm glad to see that the Ukrainians uh, seem to be much better prepared uh, if an invasion should happen. But let's not kid anybody. Uh, you got 150 uh, Russian forces there with tanks, uh, with uh, weapons. 
uh, they could indeed conduct a blitzkrieg that could move all the way to Kiev uh, and probably uh, most of that country in a very short period of time. Uh, it, it, the story here is that it still could result in a very prolonged war if the Ukrainians are prepared for a resistance, which I think they are. Uh, and so the, the price here that Russia would pay is being stuck in a prolonged uh, war with, uh, within the Ukraine. Uh, that ultimately uh, would undermine Russia itself. So I, I think right now the Ukraine can put up a fight. Uh, if Russia wants to take the Ukraine, they probably could. But I really think that the price that Russia will pay and that the United States has made clear they will pay is probably what is making Putin hesitate at this point and try to see whether or not there may be a diplomatic way to try to resolve these issues. I'm not sure there is. I think Putin uh, is concerned about one thing, and that's democracy in the Ukraine. Uh, if the Ukraine remains a strong democracy, it'll send a signal to the people in Russia that this is what their country could look like without Putin. And I think Putin knows that. He's afraid of that. Uh, and that's, frankly, an issue that is a lot more difficult to resolve than these security issues that are now on the table. And there have been reports of cyber attacks in Ukraine as recently as yesterday, but no attribution to Russia. It could have been some other uh, independent actors. But in the past, he has certainly done that. Uh, what are the risks? Should we retaliate in cyber against Moscow if they attack or start an invasion with a cyber attack against Ukraine? And does that risk an escalation? You've been warning since I've known you. Uh, but well, certainly since CIA director days, uh, about our cyber defenses needing to be strengthened. I, I think what you're seeing is that uh, the Russians are going to try to operate from their hybrid war playbook uh, that they've used in the past. Uh, frankly, that's been very effective for them in the past because they've used cyber, they've used uh, uh, you know, phony uh, military people and little green men that they uh, used in the Crimea. Uh, but the reality is that we are in a high-tech uh, world, and cyber can be a very effective weapon uh, at paralyzing another country. So I wouldn't be surprised if Russia indeed was using cyber to try to see if they can disrupt the Ukraine. And I would hope, uh, and I think the president made this clear, that uh, if they do use cyber, that we are prepared to retaliate as well using cyber. I, I think that's probably the more likely scenario in these next few weeks is that you start to see a lot more uh, use of high tech uh, and cyber as a way to see if you can kind of throw the other side off balance uh, in, in what is a very different world. You know, I, I know we're talking about conventional war, but this is also the 21st century. Uh, and I think the wars of the 21st century are largely going to be played out on a cyber battlefield. And if we retaliate, can't that blow back on us very quickly? Uh, you know, I think, uh, I think we need to send a signal to the Russians that we have the capability to use cyber in a way that can disrupt their infrastructure, disrupt, disrupt their command and control, uh, disrupt their communications. Uh, they need to know that they will pay a price if they use cyber. And so for that reason, I think the United States needs to be fully prepared to respond if necessary. Leon Panetta, as always, it, uh, is very good to have you on. Thank you so much.